Yo, top billing. You know how I be, right? Your favorite restaurant, you just be like, man, tired of that stupid restaurant, man. We ain't going back over there again. You had bad service here a couple of times and that. Then the next week, you're back out there again. Eating that Geno's, right? You guys back eating that Geno's again, right? And this command is win, right? The record may not show it, but the commanders are a tough team. They should have beat Philly twice. Took them to overtime. I think one game was like 34 to 31 in overtime, and the other one was 38-31. Philly having a tough time with Washington because they have a crazy amount of weapons and they have guys out of the backfield that are extremely dynamic. But man, they're one through four or five targets outstanding and Sam Howell my man Yosemite Sam is doing exactly what I said that he would do in my eval of him when he was in college when he was in high school actually but I digress from that your man E at Geno's right here on this sprint now right you got that balanced formation but the strength of it actually is to the boundary these type of plays right here are very hard to do right you have to actually sell this your man locket launcher right here selling it upfield coming back right here you talk about a degree of difficulty absolutely crazy and your boy e at genos with the menu right here on the Jakob. come on man virgin tight window on this one saint juice that man was everywhere your boy benjamin saint juice drawing uh drawing the opportunity on this one let's actually check out your locket right here right give him that variance that rhythm has he right there push it up feel if I'm St. Juice, I would be worried about anything back shoulder because I know Tyler Lockett is probably not going to outjump me because St. Juice is like 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 4, 4, or something like that. But, man, he stops on the brakes and Gino launching that bad boy. You can see the synergy with it. Low window weight and yaka right then and there. I'm like, oh, my God, what a drive right there. Three minutes and 47 seconds. I'm like, well, that's it for the commanders, right? Way different there. And then they go down there and do their one-two thing. Sam Howard, uh, Terry McLaurin, he was getting it over with his spoon and all kinds of cats out there. And they score a touchdown with Deami Brown. Uh, we see it again right here on this one. Look at the laser point accuracy right here. Low in the way. Tyler Lockett doing a great job of creating that separation right there. Just enough. I wonder how many times they've repped this right here. This looks too damn clean. That's a clean ass rep between those two right there. One knee equals two feet and you're out of there. The game within the game, man, you talking about these guys showing this overload pressure right now. Technically, it's four to the left and four to the right here. But you can see where the pressure's starting to come, all right, or where it's going to come, right? But then they do themselves a solid right here and they start looping and stunting and really trying to test these guys' merit right here on the left side of the offensive line. Once again, the offensive line had a little bit of trouble, but hey, I digress from that as well. But uh, we see right here, they coming with this absolutely voiding, right? Absolute National Lampoon's vacation right here. You want to throw into the vacation, right? So if you wonder if you're Geno Smith, you already know where you're going with this here. They're showing this pressure here. They don't back up out of it. You can see him, right? Look at Metcalf, kind of hold his safety a little bit by looking back right, right? Since, you know, he always just looks, right? He's always just staring. You can see him right there. Take his head off the center line and then come back to it. You throw into the void there. If they're not going to, if they're going to give it up like that, you're just going to take it right into the void right there. This was an absolute perfect play call. We see it from this side right here. Him on St. Juice, him being Dennis Rodman Jr. himself. Rhythm very right there. Bend it on the inside. Absolutely perfect on the Jakob right there. Get vertical up there. Get yourself some more yards. On this one right here, man, every yard counts at the end when you're playing for that field goal position. And it looked like they may not have had enough time, but, man, they were chunking plays off uh, with – E that Geno's going to your man Charbonnet. Or well, one time he didn't get out of bounds. He was trying to send somebody to Zombie Town. But then he got another one there and he was able to get out of bounds there. So they were able to kind of chunk those yards up, man. They were cool, calm, and collected. You can tell they kind of got in a little bit of a rhythm, especially when they were going to more uh, that variable timing offense where they were spreading it out and they would go empty and then they would kind of run with the heat tempo pacing as well. So they were dialing it up that way, dialing it back. They were just varying and stuff like it was 
one of the better offensive showings that we've seen, especially when they got to that run game and they started really leaning on that. This shit was hard. Now, I absolutely love this play from DK Metcalf right here. Pushing it vertical on Benjamin St. Juice, clearing that zone, bending it in. Gino already had that bad boy served up on a platter to right order up. Jacob. And this right here, showing that will, showing that beast mode. I'm saying for lack of a better term right here. Mark Sanchez, what was he talking about? I can't stand Mark Sanchez. Man. He needs to get down. It's like 20 seconds left, right? He's trying to get as close as possible. He gets them an extra 10 or something yards or whatever like that. They have more than enough time to line up. You're running towards the play first and foremost on a play like that. It's not like you're laterally moving or you got to run backwards or something. Everybody's running towards the play, running. <laughs> it's mad easy to get it lined up that quick in a, in a constricted formation and clock the ball. He got it extremely close just from Will want to effort and all of that, right? And Mark Sanchez up there struggling and looking dumb. Then he's like, oh, they're, they're going to clock it with four seconds left. I'm like, no shit, Sherlock. Come on, man. Now, this play right here, I don't think I've seen this too many times. Somebody getting ejected in the NFL from a helmet to helmet. This was a pretty throw by E. That Geno's and that against the grain throw, but I want you to watch this right here. Always make fun of Tyler Lockett with the Horton here's a who and shit like that. Sometimes I think you can bring some stuff upon yourself with the negative energy. They always tell us, right, coming up is like, listen, you may as well catch the ball. You're going to get hit anyway. You can see him right here. Even before the hit, he straight drops this because he's looking for the pat. I mean, he's looking for the hit, right? The ball's already gone. He's trying to brace himself, right, for contact. But this was nasty. You can see him already wincing and everything before it happens, right? He's normally sure-handed, no doubt about that. Some of the best hands you will see, but this was a flat-out drop because he's trying to brace for contact. Should have braced for contact while catching the ball, though, but... I had to go back and look at this. This was, oh man, Manuel Forbes, the rookie from Mississippi State right there. Straight helmet to helmet. Yeah, that's bang. He got, you know what, man. Won't you send me to Zombie Town? <laughs> right, we rarely get to see Tyler Lockett go to Zombie Town. <laughs> right, he got sent to Zombie Town and I think it woke him up. You can see the agony and everything on his face right here. <laughs> Right, that was a tough hit, man. Props to him for being able to get back from that particular hit right there and come back to make the essentially the, the game winning touchdown that at least it looked like at one particular point in time, having a pretty good game there. Tough ass game in sport that people don't understand sitting in their damn couch as some type of couch coach and shit like that. But bang, oof. Now, there's always a debate with DK Metcalf when I talk about having good hands. Like, somebody like A.J. Brown has great hands, like naturally great hands. Like, on a play like this, I, you can just tell that DK Metcalf didn't come up as a natural hands catcher. Look at him. He's almost like basket catching something that's coming to where he could turn his hands outwards and pluck it out of the sky right here. We've seen it time and time again in the NFL, but he's kind of basket catching it. And look, it just gets past his hands. You can't really even put that on St. Juice, at least, you know what I'm saying, the initial part of that. He lets it get into his body and tries to kind of like curl catch it, right? And it just kind of bounces off his shoulder pads. Look, bang. But that's not something that they'll say on the telecast or whatever like that. That is the type of catch I think that takes DK Metcalf to the next level once he's able to master these type of catches, just going up and getting it over somebody. We see it time and time. I, have to, I hate to keep bringing up A.J. Brown, but he mastered those type of catches. That's what makes him have great hands. All right, y'all, I'm going to come back with the Papa John um, a little bit later, but... I wanted just to get to a couple of things here. Actually, I got a couple more things right after this, though. But look, your boy Leonard Williams, Big Leo showing up. My man Leo, look at the move right here. On the outside, fought the hands right there, got straight vertical up the field. Your boy Sam Howell, Young Yosemite Sam right here, the gunslinger, into a, into a man's arms, right? Prison loving. Look at that. Leo Williams introducing them, right? That's that, that's that NFC East right there, though, right? And if you look right here with well, something strange going on, 
uh, Charles Leno right here, he got extremely mad for some odd reason, and Leo Williams pulled up. Did y'all notice this? Leo Williams didn't throw him to the ground. He pulled up and then had to kind of step over him and everything like that, and Charles Leno was angry than a mug trying to fight Leo Williams there, but, man, somebody was asking, like, you think we should got Chase Young? I'm like, man, y'all got to stop with the edge players, man. You got Taylor, Mafe, Derek Hall, Frank Clark, and all this. You needed the inside presence. This one move alone right here could change the balance of power because now you add him in with a Jaron Reed, and you saw Draymond Jones get after it as well. Not a great defensive showing, but Washington, I'm telling you, was one of the toughest offenses to deal with. I've seen it firsthand a couple of times in October with the Philly coverage, so... He's right there, man. Hell of a way to get skinny by a guy who's 300-something pounds like that. Fight the inertia right here. Have that man heavy-legged waist bending. Look at this. Fight it and then get skinny. Straight vertical right there up the field. Your man Sam Howell not going down easy, though, right? <laughs> Usually they go down easy like a $2 hooker. Sam Howell like a high-priced car girl with it, right? He's still up. <laughs> Come on. What are we doing? Let's get it. What? <laughs> Did he say get over to what? This is why I don't like announcing these days, right? These new age announcers are clowns, like social media parrots, right? This is how they do their studying. They get on Twitter just like everybody else. They get on YouTube like everybody else. They be out here repeating people on YouTube phrasings in their national announcers. It didn't used to be like that. Before, when you were professional, you would separate yourself from the fans. These guys are parroting narratives, and then that's all that they can see. He said it himself, right? This is third and four, quick game shit, right? So you got the original route here, right? You got the shallow cross by Smith and Jigba. You got Noah Fant coming on a choice route. It's not an angle route. He's going to read the leverage of this. So this is going to go this way, right, with a vapor trail right behind it. Look, you have Mayo there. He passes it off. Jamin Davis is right here. You can't go to Smith and Jigba right here. What are you going to do? You're going to go to him, right, throw him and get him absolutely annihilated. You're coming behind on this one right here. Look, this holding right here. He can't go here either. What do you want him to do? Now the pocket is collapsing. <laughs> There's nowhere to go right here. What do you mean go to Smith and Jigba? How does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. You're parroting narratives, right? You want to play to the crowd. You want to be cool on social media, right? You don't want to be known for the butt fumble out here in Jersey, right? So you want to play to the crowd, but that shit is collapsing. Where could he go? You try to say something like, what is he going to go to um, a dunk down here with Starbonnet who's running a swing route? That's not even really in the progression. For him to have had that, you would have to have better protection than this. Look at this. The shit is collapsing. You saw there was nowhere to go off of multiple progressions. How is he locked in onto one progression? You said it yourself. Look at that. What, what is he supposed to do with that? <laughs> if anything, it's just a poorly developed play. <laughs> Look, go again. Look, there is you can't go back to Smith and Jigba on this when they pass it out. Jamin Davis was right here, right? He was posted up. At, at, at the C gap, right? He bags back out. Look at the plane right there. You cannot throw this to Jackson Smith and Jigba. There's no need for him to even worry about this because he's going to get him smoked, right? So now when the shit is collapsing, you can't go to your, your secondary read. You need to try to escape. But guess what? You can't escape. You got people over here struggling on the inside, right? They're detaching, right? Jonathan Allen in on that. He's supposed to break that. You got to be, come on, man. You can't do that, man. I'm noticing that a lot um, when I'm watching this shit right here. You even have one where the dude was like, oh, he's throwing it behind him. And it's clearly the guy stopped on the route. It's this play right here, the play-by-play -play guy, right? Some geek who doesn't know shit about football anyway. Back to the basket, play action fake. Watch Noah Fant right here. You have to clear this cover two hole, right? Or not, it's not, well, listen, you have to clear the underneath route. You're trying to get to this particular portion of the zone right here. When Noah Fant turns his head around, look, he stops. Geno's throwing it to a spot. Did you not see the rhythm of his feet going right there? He turns around and gets lost or something like that. Look, when he turns around right here, instead of running, he starts shuffling his feet. You see him? 
He's shuffling his feet, and then he starts to get back into it. But Gino's throwing to a spot. He expects him to be there. That's throwing it in front of somebody or throwing it off target? No. You got to be able to point that out. Now, to Mark Sanchez's credit, he did point out that no offense did stop on this one right here. But it's like once you put that out there, the fans are going to parrot that. Listen, most fans are watching right now. They're watching for this guy to fail because that's the narrative. Right, So if you want to be a part of the go along, get along gang, you're going to say that any and everything that you see that's negative, you're going to parrot that whether somebody comes back and corrects it or not. You got to be on the money with that, right? Listen, they have to move on from Geno Smith, right? It's time to play Drew Locke. It, it, you can just feel the angst in the atmosphere right there, right? It's uncomfortable to watch, right? It's every little thing, right? It's like everybody's playing up tight. You got people stopping on routes. You got Geno can't get to a tertiary read that wouldn't even make sense to get to, <laughs> like, and stuff like that, and they're pointing this out on telecast. It's an untenable situation. They need to go ahead and end it and just play Drew Locke. That's just the bottom line. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.